Good morning, everyone. Oh, I'm on now. My name is Adia, and I'm thrilled to be back at Ignite with our Youth Ignite band today. So I'm joined in worship with you guys by Josh, Sophia, Ali, Ethan, Will, Derek, and Callahan. Ignite welcomes all. No matter how you identify yourself or how others identify you, you are welcome here. Ignite preaches good news for all and not bad news for some. So let's get ready to raise our voices to God. Can everyone please stand with me? And we're going to sing our first tune, If the Lord Builds the House. Standing for this next one, Honey in the Rock. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry, no, I know everything I need, you got. There's
There's honey in the rock. Praying for a miracle, mercy for the living well. Only you can satisfy. Sweetness at the mercy seat. Now I've tasted, it's not hard to see. Only you can satisfy There's honey in the rock 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 Freedom where the spirit is Bounty in the wilderness Only you will satisfy there's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need you got. There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plan, power in your love, healing in your hands. Started flowing when you said it's done. Everything you did's enough. I keep looking. I keep finding, you keep giving, keep providing. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. I keep praying, you keep moving. I keep praising, you keep proving. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. I keep looking, I keep finding. Keep giving, keep providing. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. I keep praying, you keep moving. I keep praising, you keep proving. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. Manna on the ground, no matter where I go I don't need to worry now that I know Everything I need you got There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plan Power in your love, healing in your hands Started flowing when you said it's done Jesus, who you are is enough There's honey in the rock There's honey in the rock. There's honey in the rock. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is. To trust in you, Jesus. A couple announcements. Please be sure to stay after our Ignite service this morning and enjoy an old-fashioned Methodist potluck. There's going to be great food and fellowship time. There's also going to be a brief all-church meeting following our luncheon where Pastor Jonathan and Pastor Lauren will be sharing some insightful information with the Ignite community community. Now please take a moment to say hello to someone new or someone that you haven't seen in a while.
So we're Scripture before ten. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. All right. Sounds good. Yes. All right. I will see you soon. Yes. Kill it. Thank you. When the best of me is barely breathing When I'm not somebody I believe in Hold on to me When I miss the light the night is stolen When I'm slamming all the doors you've opened Hold on to me Hold on to me. Hold on to me when it's too dark to see you. When I am sure I have reached the end. Hold on to me when I forget I need you. When I let go, hold me again. When I don't feel like I'm worth defending When I'm tired of all my pretending Hold on to me When I start to break in desperation Underneath the weight of expectation Hold on to me Hold on to me when it's too dark to see you. When I am sure I have reached the end. Hold on to me when I forget I need you. When I let go, hold me again. I could rest here in your arms forever cause I know nobody loves me better hold on to me hold on to me I invite all the kids to come up here, please. Hi, how are you guys? That's great. Um, do you guys like Legos? Okay, what do you like about them? Do you like building them? <laughs> uh, do you have any Lego sets um, that you favor? Like, do you have any Lego sets that you love a lot? A thousand pieces? Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, I also really like Legos, too. They're really fun to build. Um, what do you usually do when they fall apart? What? Put them back together. Yes, we do. It's sort of like God, isn't it? Like whenever we fall apart, God is always there to put us back together, right? All right. Um, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being there for us. Thank you for helping us when we needed you most. And most importantly, thank you for putting us back together. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. 
You guys can go back to your seats. Don't rush through any season You always take your time A careful hand A channel guide You take what's dead away And you prune what's running wild So be the gardener of my heart Tend the soil of my soul Break up the fallow ground Cut back the overgrown I won't shy away I will let the branches fall So what you want can say And what you love can grow Through the winter I'm still alive What you planted in the dirt Is ever reaching to the light You prepare me For darkened times You'll sustain what you have started And you'll teach me to abide So be the gardener of my heart Tend the soil of my soul Break up the fallow ground, cut back the overgrown. I won't shy away, I will let the branches fall. So what you want can stay, and what you love can grow. Grow. Today's scripture comes from Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Worship him, all you peoples, because God's faithful love towards us is strong. The Lord's faithfulness lasts forever. Praise the Lord. God's word for God's people.
Hello. Hi, my name is Ben. Um, I'm the youth and family minister here at PVUMC. Um, we actually had a student here today to do the sermon. He got sick yesterday, so um, he will not be here. I am your backup, so sorry about that. Um, but uh, hey, how about, the, how about these kids in the band? It was really cool, right? It's awesome. Yeah, youth killing it today. Yeah, today is our Youth Ignited service. That's kind of why we wanted to, you know, just showcase some of our youth's talents and everything. And yeah, the sermon was going to be great, but now it's going to be bad. So we'll see. Just kidding. Um, anyway, uh, let's get right into it. Um, do you guys have any enemies? Yeah. Like, if you're the protagonist of your story, who's the antagonist? Who's the Voldemort in your life? The Darth Vader? Um, I've had very few enemies in my life, honestly, don't really see the point. Um, but mo I mostly get along well with people, but there was this one guy, his name was, I'm going to use a different name because they record these ones. I used a real name. <laughs> so this is actually, this is a sermon, fun story. This is a sermon that I've used with the youth a few weeks ago, so like they've, they've heard this. Um, in that one, I used the guy's real name. I will not for this since it will be online. Um, we'll just call him Billy. Wait, no, let me think of a name. Billy, Billy Williams, yes, Billy Williams. Um, my freshman year at GCU, I was randomly placed with five roommates, and most of them were great. But Billy, Billy first and foremost believed that he was a perfect 10, like just the most attractive person in the world. He thought he was the best looking guy in the room at all times, and he would let you know he felt that way. Um, he also believed he was the smartest and most athletic, the best at guitar, the best at, well, you guys get the point, right? Like, just the best. Billy thought he was the greatest. And honestly, he was pretty smart, right? And he was not, like, bad looking, and he was pretty athletic. If he could have just shut up about it, like, people probably would have come to those conclusions on their own. But he didn't want you to just see those things about him. He wanted you to know that you were inferior. So it was weird. Definitely some insecurity going on. So me and Billy, right away, we just didn't click great. And to be fair, like a lot of people just didn't click great with Billy. I probably sound really salty. Sorry, Billy, if you're watching. I recall on one occasion, I, had told, I told Billy a girl we knew was cute. And he immediately responded with, bro, she is way out of your league. She's even out of my league. Which I just thought. First of all, the idea of leagues is stupid. Secondly, this is just an example of how in your face he would be about letting you know he believed he was better than you. Um, in another instance, oh, this one really upset me. I remember him questioning, I remember him questioning how I could have ever dated anyone before, being well me, right? Which I'm not sure what that meant, but I pulled up, I pulled up a couple of my exes on Facebook to show him they were real humans, and I remember Billy saying, "Oh, no pics together, didn't happen then." And Billy hadn't had a real girlfriend before, so I don't think he realized that you often delete those photos after a breakup. I even remember him saying. That girl's cute, though. Maybe I'll hit her up. Like about an ex. Anyway, anyway. so Billy, not a good deal. My friends, what do you do with the Billies in your life? You guys know a Billy? The people who just seem unbearable to you? The people who are objectively not a good time? Well, let's open our Bibles to John 13. We're going to look at a story about Jesus' Billy. I'll pull it up on my phone because I'm a millennial. And what we're about to read is right before Jesus would be crucified. Like, this is at the Last Supper, um, which, honestly, like, some of the greatest stuff in the book of John happens in this conversation um, between Jesus and his disciples. Um, some of, like, really great theology we have um, comes right from, right from this conversation. So we're going to read, we're going to read the whole chapter. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, slash Billy, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? 
Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Jesus said, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth, slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. I am not saying these things to all of you. I know the ones I have chosen. But this fulfills the scripture that says, the one who eats my food has turned against me. I tell you this beforehand so that when it happens, you will believe that I am the Messiah. I tell you the truth, anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me, but anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the Father who sent me. Now Jesus was deeply troubled, and he exclaimed, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at each other, wondering whom he could mean. The disciple Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the table. That's what John calls himself in John. I don't know if you guys knew this. He always calls himself the disciple Jesus loved. It's like, I mean, I guess he was trying to be humble. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask, who's he talking about? So that disciple leaned over to Jesus and asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus responded, it is the one to whom I give the bread I dip in this bowl. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon. When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus told him, hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Since Judas was their treasurer, some thought Jesus was telling him to go and pay for the food or give some money to the poor. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. As soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, The time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. And since God receives glory because of his Son, he will soon give glory to, uh, to the Son. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I am going. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, again, you can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. But why can't I come now, Lord? He asked, I'm ready to die for you. Peter's kind of annoying. Jesus answered, die for me. I tell you the truth, Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. So following the story, Judas tells the Pharisees where they can find Jesus. They come and arrest him. The next day he is crucified. Let's back up for a second and talk about this chapter. Firstly, Jesus shows us in this story exactly what humility is. And I love it. This, kind of, this is kind of his final lesson to the disciples. Let me show you how I want you to treat others with love and with a humble disposition, a willingness to serve anyone. But even more incredible, incredible to me is that he also washed Judas' feet, knowing exactly where Judas was going to go that night. See, buried in the message that Jesus is teaching them is it doesn't matter who people are. We as followers of Jesus are asked to love everyone. Everyone. And that's really hard. Treat every person kindly, even the ones who suck. Right? Um, this is, this is semi-related. I wasn't planning on telling the story, but the foot washing reminded me. Uh, I used to work at a church, like a big non-denominational church in Chandler called Cornerstone. And um, one year we had our we had our high school camp, probably 150 kids go up to uh, this, this outdoor camp, Forest Home was the name of it in California. And I remember at the end of a long day, we had these spiritual stations set up all around the campground, you know, maybe even like a quarter mile in between each one. There was one that was like, I don't know, like lighting candles, just like doing meditative type things. One of these stations was foot washing. And the leaders were supposed to wash the feet of their students. So I had a group of, you know, I had a group of young men who had been out and about the whole day. And you would go, you would rotate around the stations. We came to the foot washing station last, which meant all those other kids had been there before. And which meant the tubs for washing feet were brown and dark and just so gross. 
and I already was not a fan of having to do this. Um, we came up to these things, and right away, I had one of my students, as soon as he saw this, and bless his heart, he's a, a young man. Um, I, won't, I guess I shouldn't use his name any, either, but he's just a great kid. He's on, he's on the autism spectrum, and as soon as he saw the foot washing station, man, he just ran right up to one. You know, he threw off his shoes and socks. He sat right down. He, like, stuck his foot, and he's like, all right, Ben, I'm ready to get my feet washed. <laughs> and I was just like, like, no, guys, we're not doing this one. Like, let's go. I could not do it. Like, the fact that, the fact that Jesus would do, like, the, these guys are way grosser than, like, my, my students walking around all day. Like, they, they walked around all the time. They didn't have cars, you know. They didn't even have, like, proper shoes. Their feet were disgusting. And he was even willing to do that for Judas, right? You know, I think... I think before I go any further, I think you could go a little, a little too far with, with being nice to everybody, right? Like you could become a total pushover by just continuing to let people hurt you. I think that's the initial reaction a lot of people have to a lesson like this. Like, wait, just be kind to people who are hateful and mean? Like, nah, that's weak. Like, nah, that's being a pushover, you know? Um, oh, third page. I think that's misunderstanding the whole point. Because this isn't about go and, go and be nice to someone even as they're, like, breaking your jaw or, or stealing your wife. Like, this is about your disposition toward others. Because Jesus wasn't always nice. I don't know if you guys have noticed that in the, in the Gospels. Look at how he challenges Pharisees at times in the Gospels, even at one point calling them a brood of vipers. Or how about the time Jesus chased people out of the temple because they were cheating other people? But his dis disposition was always one of humility and love. If a Pharisee broke his leg, do you think Jesus would say, ha, serves him right, and walk away? Like, no. He would fix him right there. In John 3, a Pharisee comes to Jesus' camp, unknown to the other Pharisees, like in the cover of night, and he and Jesus have one of the most famous conversations we have in the Bible. John 3.16 comes out of that chapter. And Jesus expresses nothing but kindness to him. He treated people as equals even when he had no business treating others as equals. Like, dude was God's physical form. And I think that's, that's the real message here, is that that's the kind of love Jesus means when he says love everyone. Even his enemies, even the Pharisees, even Judas, even Billy, everyone. He showed them equality. The, follow, the, the following Jesus thing is hard sometimes, right? Like, the things he asks us to do can seem impossible but every single one of them helps us or helps others, and that's why he asks us to do it. And honestly, when I detach myself from, from expectations for other people, when I kind of like, instead of expecting people to like be nice to me, and then I'll be nice to them, or be respectful to me, and then I'll respect them, treat me as an equal, and then I'll treat you as an equal. When I detach myself from all those expectations for other people, and I'm just committed to loving them regardless, I'm so much freer from anxiety I'm just, like, down to be a good human to you. Just, like, down to remain me, no matter who you're being. And when people who aren't used to being treated that way feel that for the first time, feel like, oh, you're just going to, like, unconditionally respect me, it can be life-changing for them. Unconditional love can be transformative for a person's heart. Guys, today, Billy is CEO of Enterprise, the car rental company. Just kidding. He's not. I don't, I don't know what he's doing. Um, but I hope, that so I hope that somewhere along the way, people in his life loved him unconditionally so that he didn't feel the need to prove himself to everyone anymore. Because I know that's where um, all of that insecurity came from. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for, for you and for showing us the example you did um, washing the disciples' feet and just the way that you treated everyone um, during your time here and the way you continue to treat people today. And um, I pray that you would just give us the strength and the courage to continue to do that, um, to carry on your example just in the world. And that's the whole point of, uh, of what we're doing here at all. And in your holy and precious name I pray, amen. And Taloa has a very important thing to say. Where is? Wait a minute. 
Yeah, where, where is Jeremy? Where's the other Jeremy? All right, Tulloa. Hello, everyone. I'm the wife of your director of operations of the church. And we're coming on our three-year anniversary for dating. And he gives me so much crap for not having proposed to him. We're married. So I finally got his wedding band. And I need you to take a knee. Will you marry again, Jeremy J. Rohrbaugh? Yay! He said yes! <laughs> it fits. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to kiss you. for all my sin your body crucified to make me whole again I will recall the cup poured out in sacrifice to trade the sinner's end for your new So 
Now we come to our time of offering at Ignite, where we have an opportunity to give back a little of what God has so graciously blessed us with to support the work of PBUMC. If you are a visitor, please know that we don't expect you to give. Your presence is this morning is the gift to us. However, if you consider this church your home, you can give on your way out with the baskets on the tables by the PBUMC sign right over there or online at pbumc.org slash give now. Please join me in this benediction prayer. May we all, at least every now and then, feel you near and see your face, O oh God. Support us as we do our work. Empower us as we share the journey. Now please stand and, and um, let us sing our final song. the shadows bound for the gallows a dead man walking till love came calling rise up rise up six feet under i thought it was over and answered a prayer the voice of a savior rise up too far gone for everything I've done wrong yeah I'm the one who dug this grave 
Thought that I was too far gone for everything I've done wrong. Yeah, I'm the one who dug this grave, but you call my name, you call my name. All at once, I came. everyone. We'll see you next Sunday. Same as you did over there. And if you want to do more, you can. If you want, but I'm, I'm going to kind of stick to the front. Hello, friends. Thank you for being here at our all-church meeting. For those of you here in person and those of you at home, I've been here for now four years. So it was four years in March. And in my four years, I have witnessed a lot of transition in this community, which means that you've seen even more. <laughs> I'm looking at, you know, Mary's nodding her head. Yes, we've seen Peggy. Yes, we've all seen a lot of transition. And when we're in a lot of transition, it can sometimes feel unsteady, and we don't know where we're going to land. And so the last few years have been really unsure. And Jonathan's been here for four months, um, and he's been observing and listening and taking it all in. And so today, this idea of getting focused is, is one to help give us a, a pointed direction for us to remember who we are as a church and where God is working in our midst and where God is leading us, we think. And so thank you for being here. I'm going to hand it over to Jonathan to lead us through what he has been working on. Thank you very much, Lauren. Uh, you guys hear me okay? Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, I, as Lauren mentioned, I've been here for, well, it's three months and three weeks. Uh, not quite crossed the four-month mark yet. Um, and I, I've been listening. And uh, 
what, what I'm clear on is that we need to get onto the same page. We need to make sure that we are on the same page. We're moving the same direction. So I don't know exactly what to call the document. And if you haven't seen the document, we'll be putting up where you can find it online a little bit later in this, uh, this conversation. Um, and I also want to tell you, our initial thought was to put the document out and then to put a microphone on the floor and we do Q&A. And then we realized um, with as many people are in this church, that could be five hours. And I'm not sure I can do five hours of Q&A. Um, so I thought better of that. And um, what, what I want to say and what I'm hoping will happen out of this, one of the things is that we will be opening, this is a channel an open channel, an open conversation, a way to, um, for you to see uh, how we're thinking and uh, uh, a way for you to tell us what you think about that. Um, uh, this started, as Lauren mentioned, or maybe I mentioned it, uh, it, it started with um, listening. There were some uh, prepared times where, like I sat with uh, members of church council on a couple of occasions and um, there were some formal settings like that. There were some uh, quite a few casual settings, conversations, observations, impressions. Um, and what you will see in this document is uh, my first attempt at putting on paper what I've been hearing. I, I want to make sure that I'm picking up what you're putting down, uh, that I'm hearing correctly, my impressions are, are right. Uh, you all contributed to this, and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Um, uh, so I want to start. Let's go to the next slide here. I, I, I am um, amazed by how much this church is doing and doing so right and so well. Um, uh, what's what's really neat about this church, though, is that y you all have been vulnerable enough to also share some things that were tried that didn't work, and there were learnings that came from that. Um, uh, and there's also been some, well, we tried this and it worked for a while, but it doesn't work anymore, and so we've discontinued that. Or, or you shared with me decisions that were made with the best intention and the best laid plans, and they brought unintended consequences or unforeseen outcomes. Um, you've been vulnerable also and shared with me what scares you. And across the board, repeatedly, I have heard what frightens you most is the, the fear of irrelevance and the death of this church. Uh, uh, I, and so uh, me being me, I, I started wanting to, so one of the meetings I went to I, I, uh, was with about half of church council and about half of the, the staff parish oversight committee. And um, uh, after the meeting, um, we all went home, but I didn't go home. I pulled into a parking lot and sat there for two hours and took notes, writing down what actually was more like two and a half hours, took notes, writing down what I had heard and uh, what had been shared, trying to get usable, practical words and sentences and images around what everyone seems to know as the, the, that is part of this church. Um, uh, I'm, I'm one of those people that, I, th those leadership statements, most of them um, that, that you see on walls and on posters and all, they're kind of useless because the words are, are very aspirational, but they don't say anything. And so I, I'm, I'm looking for, I'm trying to put into words, usable, practical words and sentences and images, um, and you all have been very articulate with me. Very clear on your solid theology here. Uh, very clear understanding of what it means to be United Methodist here. Um, there's some conversation about the volunteer model that is in place right now, and I'm suggesting we actually I'm, I'm imposing that that we honor the three-year rotation on all administrative committees and all committee chairpersons, uh, and then missions and and uh, other. Uh, ministry committees, members can stay on uh, as long as they'd like. Um, 
I'm also making some suggestions that we spend some time uh, updating uh, our, our form of governance here. Uh, um, and I tried to be specific and I tried to share some arguments for why we do these things. And, and uh, but my, my, the bigger question, the reason we're having this meeting today is because I want to open this channel and I want you to tell me, tell us, uh, Lauren and I, uh, uh, are we hearing correctly what you're telling us? Are our impressions correct? And, and I also want to tell you that when you look at the document, if you haven't so far, do this. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll notice V00003. Um, what that tells us is that it's already been improved. Uh, your your uh, church council has done some good work with me on that. Um, but it's also expected